the photographer's platform on the finish line, one of the classic vantage points on the tour. And of all the ways of seeing cycling, photography is one of the most appropriate. The camera and the bicycle are close technological contemporaries. Many of the same 19th century inventors contributed to both, and the one has always been fascinated by the other. Even today, in the hands of a master, photography can teach us new ways of seeing the sport. My name is Christophe Ramon, I'm a Belgian cycling photographer and I only photograph pro cycling. Get my frame, get my picture, get my frame, get my picture, get my frame, get my picture, get my frame, get my picture. Drama stories are like the backbone of my interests. And when I came into cycling photography, I got to, at first I got known for actually captioning action pictures but I got really bored with that really quickly. And uh, I now try to orientate myself much more towards storytelling. And it's maybe the pictures in between that, that tell a bigger story than actually the race pictures. One image can tell a lot of things. So that's what I'm after a lot of the time. Get my frame, get my picture. One of the main things I focus on is positioning myself, uh, to have the right angle, to have a good view of what's going to happen and more anticipate what's, where, what direction they'll be going and stuff. And in Brussels, I was actually extremely well. I was the only one at one spot and captured this, what I, what I, it's a, it's a, it says it all actually. So it's the joy, it's the pure joy and camaraderie that comes with a team time trial win. One of the most important things is the people skills. It's more than the technical stuff as a photographer that you need to master, obviously, is, is the fact that you have to be able to relate to other people and understand when they need their privacy and, and when it might be okay sort of to nibble in and, and see what's happening. This is one of those private moments that I'm only able to achieve by building up good relationships and long relationships because I've known Daryl five years maybe. So when he came back to the hotel after doing all the, the things he needed to as the, the stage winner, but then there was a little moment and it was the very first moment he was by himself. He allowed me like for a little to go with him into the room and he just sat down on the bed and just, I just went into the room, just check what, what kind of room is this? How was the light for? So I knew what my settings were set. So the only thing I needed to do was to sort of frame and hit the button and went, get out again. So in 15 seconds, I got amazing shots. So I'm on a motorbike in the Dauphiné and we knew the day before or the day itself that, that there was a very high probability of severe thunderstorms at the end of the race. And it happened. As soon as we started doing the last climb, it sort of, you saw the everything getting dark. And I must say, all of a sudden, it hit us, it really hit us. And the, the best way actually to show it was when there was a motorbike of the police behind the rider. I come from a film background, which means that I do allow myself to sort of interpret a picture. It's not, I don't alter anything in the picture. I mean, it is there and these are the conditions that went as it happened. Another rider I have an absolute great relationship with, it's John Dinko. In the famous uh, Roubaix showers, uh, just after Paris-Roubaix, one of the favorite things to shoot is to shoot what I call a post-race face. And usually the first moment they sort of can sit down and sort of relax, that is a very significant moment. This is actually one of my very favorite pictures ever. <laughs> <laughs>